Welcome to Artists in Residences, the Westport Library's virtual artist series. I'm Carol Ergerfass, and I'm exhibit curator at the library. In today's episode, Migs Burroughs takes us on a trip to see Jermaine West. Jermaine's career as an artist began with graffiti and has evolved into other mediums, including paintings on canvas, photography, screen printing, and graphic design. He's also the co-founder and head designer of Culture Designs, an independent clothing label that draws from the rich history of African and Asian textile craftsmanship and the raw energy of graffiti culture. He organizes his work into collections, and he says he's usually working on several pieces at once. But whatever the medium, his art is a reflection of his constant critique of the world around him. Jermaine is a founding member of the Artist Collective of Westport, and his work has been exhibited locally in numerous gallery shows. His street style murals are highly sought after and have been installed in several new apartment buildings going up in the area, as well as in private homes and outdoor parks and public spaces. Through years of formal training and life experience, Jermaine has developed a unique style that combines social awareness, spirituality, mythology, and abstract language into striking visuals, visuals that intrigue all who see them. Now let's join Migs and Jermaine from his studio in Firing Circuits in Norwalk, and he'll tell us more about his work. Thank you very much, Carol. Today's guest is uh, my friend and fellow um, Artist Collective of Westport founder, Jamaine West, and an incredibly prolific and strong artist uh, who's been around uh, this area for quite a while and made a name for himself. Well, welcome, Jamaine. Uh, Thank you. Good going? to see you. You're in your, uh, is your studio in your house or are you? Uh... <laughs> no, no, actually I've had a couple of those, but uh, this studio is in uh, in the Firing Circus building uh, in Norwalk. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. That's a phenomenal place. I, um, well, your art, I just want to say out front, you know, there's artists and, you know, all different kinds of artists, portrait artists, landscape artists, uh, and a lot of it is very, this isn't meant to be a criticism of those other artists, but they're kind of passive. They're just things that uh, you appreciate and you look at and move on. And I just, my observation about your art after kind of immersing myself in it more is, it, is your art, there's an urgency to it. It, it sort of commands or it almost demands that you look at it, which is good. I don't know, is that, is that a kind of a deliberate, uh, you know, ingredient when you start out working, like how do I grab them by the throat and make them look? Yeah, well, I, I think it's more of just the reason why I'm I'm expressing, you know, why why I'm an artist. I don't know why, you know, certain people become artists, but my, my path uh, evolved out of doing graffiti and doing street art and being influenced by, you know, graffiti culture early in the days, you know, early 90s and I mean, early 80s into the mid 90s, you know, that was like a golden era of street art and, and graffiti art before it became, you know, what's known as quote unquote street art, you know, now. But even then, you know, one of the main things you wanted to do as a graffiti artist is make your stuff stand out, you know, so whether it was by style or by color or by, you know, theme or, you know, whatever you wanted to say, you, you, you had to grab people's attention because you want to stand out as an artist. Because at that time, being a, a street artist or graffiti artist wasn't necessarily, you know, accepted by society and it wasn't as cool yeah. as it is today, you know? So at that time it was just like, you know, when, when you're doing it, you're like, well, I'm doing it. So I want people to know that I do it and I want to stand out amongst so many other people that are doing it. So that's always been in, in my DNA as an artist. Yeah, and it carries through in the other work that which we'll see. I mean, you've got a variety of different approaches. I mean, there's murals and then, you know, kind of prints and collage and but yeah, they all kind of to me they demand to be seen and um and something else that I will maybe demonstrate through seeing your work which I didn't necessarily appreciate before, but you you've definitely got like a subversive wit to to your work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, I mean, I'll just, we'll see these later, but just these phrases like, you know, there's new vintage, new spelled N-O-O-H, there's Malcolm Exxon, fueling the revolution, Martin Luther, Burger King, crack tonight, um, 
as opposed to like kryptonite, which was, we'll see yeah. where, how that's relevant. Um, ghetto geisha. I mean, these are things, did you, did you come from a witty family or did you just come from a... I, I would like to say, yeah, I, I probably come from a witty family. I mean, I get it from somewhere. I won't say that I'm just the, you know, the, the original element. Yeah. I come from my, my people, my parents and my sure. DNA. But I think, you know, just, just once again, coming up, you know, a, a, a child of the 80s, and and being you know involved in developing you know urban culture at its essence and at its beginning sort of helped me develop you know just a, a different view on society and 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 how a lot of things are just so ironic you know per se and mm. uh, and and then that played into you know my expression because once again you know I want I like people to think and I want in saying something. It's like, what are you saying? And then how do you jar people's imaginations to even think? So a lot of times you take something that they're used to seeing and put a twist on it. And then it's like, oh, you know, I saw that a million times before, but now I'm seeing it in a different light. So now I'm going to think about it different, you know? So, yeah, a that's, that, you know, a lot, a lot of that, that social commentary, you know, plays into, into my art because, you know, once again, you know, as an evolution, of, you know, of a, as a graffiti artist, I started using more social commentary to to help my art get more recognized, you know. So rather than just doing, you know, some Warhol esque, you yeah. know, pop culture stuff, it's like, okay, well, how can I take it to another level with more social commentary? Um, yeah. yeah, no, I what you do it. It makes it very. Uh, at one point, it's accessible. Um, well, I had an artist, an old Polish sculptor who was in his 80s when I knew him, but he said he said that there was only two challenges to art. One was the content and one was the intent. <laughs> right. Anybody can learn how to draw a tree or a sunset or a boat uh, into different degrees of you know excellence. But mm -hmm. is there any intent? What's the intent? What, what did you try to put in, you know? Yeah, yes, especially nowadays. I mean, you know, especially, you know, talking with, you know, younger artists and artists coming up and, you know, with social media, you, I mean, you, you're seeing so much art. You see, you're able to see art from around the world. You're able to see artists that are, you know, quote unquote, 10 times better than you are and maybe <laughs> 10 times worse than you are. And you're, you're put in a position to like, why am I really creating art? Like, I, I mean, the world can always use some more art, but I don't think the world really needs more art. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's a lot out there. So what what am I doing as an artist to really, mm -hmm. you know, either make a mark or or just really do something from a, a passionate level as opposed to just making more art? Yeah, you know? wallpaper, right? Um, yeah. Now, I, well, yeah. so let's take a look. I'm going to share the screen now, and hopefully this will work out okay. And. Uh, Okay, this is very first one. Um, is this a mural somewhere or? Yeah, well, well, well this is this is uh, out, of, out of one of my black books. As, as a graffiti artist, you know, part of your development is keeping, you know, what we call black books. And that becomes, you know, your, 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 your mainstay of, of art development, you know. So a lot of your, your characters and your, your name and your, oh. your letter styles and everything, you know, that becomes your main journal to, to chronicle your development. So this is one of my, probably not one of my first black books, you know, one of my first black books were really, I mean, I look at it now and it's like terrible, <laughs> you know, but every, I think every, most graffiti artists start out, you know, doing toy, what do you call it like toy type stuff. So where you're just getting your stuff together and it's a lot of scribble and, and tags and stuff like that, but you eventually, you know, evolve and develop. So this is, you know, one of my, 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 later black books but i don't think this really became a piece but nine times out of no. ten the stuff that you do in your black book eventually you know ends up on a wall or on something somewhere but this this is just an example of of some of my black book stuff and you know there's a lot going on graphically color composition everything and then lettering and, and there's a little scroll here that i deciphered i mean it's pretty yeah. easy to read it says and i just want to read it because it's really powerful in the and you tell me if i've missed interpreted the words in the midst of so much he is forced to forget about tomorrow the soulless soldier on a mission of self-destruction with a mind full of confusion and corruption you don't know him but he is inside of you think about how you're living yeah yeah so did you write that 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, cause at, at the time, I mean, I, I don't write as much as far as like poems, um, but I did a lot of poetry and a lot of, you know, things that complemented um, the pieces that I worked on, which, you know, once again, it was just an element that I added to my artwork just to develop it more, just to make it, you know, more um, interesting to people. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, no, it's a deep, I think your work kind of requires a deep dive don't understand it all it's a, i mean it's a culture that i'm not immersed in every day and and yeah. and for you know a lot of folks in fairfield county that's it's, it's yeah. new to them and and not sure how to how to read it you know or how to yeah yeah it's, it's, but, it's understandable i mean that's it's, it's one yeah. of those those things i mean culturally i think even once again with with social media and the internet i mean a lot of you know things are being put into play that people aren't used to. So, I mean, now you're getting to see, yeah. you know, different cultures and different, you know, streams of thought that you might not have encountered, you know, any other time. So it's yeah, just, that's, a, good. that's what it's about. And that's what your art, you know, a little challenge and, you know, you look at it and just see colors or spend some time with it and, and realize there's a lot going on here. Yeah. There's a, yeah. There's a narrative and, and, um, yeah, even this one, I mean, I forget what year I, I did this, but this was just like, you know, some foresight into just marijuana and, and, and the whole, mm -hmm. um, now it's, it's so acceptable, but, you know, at the time, you know, marijuana was very illegal. And, and now it's like, you know, every sort of housewife is almost opening their own <laughs> <laughs> CBD stores. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, so there's a CBD store, or whatever medical marijuana, you know, access on every corner. But um, at this time, I mean, I was just seeing, you know, just the potential of like the government controlling the mm. whole marijuana industry and using it to then, you know, control people by how they consume it, you know, so. Well, let's try to get, to, now this one, this is a, this says um, Bridgeport says Arts. Bridgeport Arts, yeah, that, that, that was a mural that, um, myself and a, a few friends of mine did for well, the maybe the first Bridgeport Arts Festival mm. that might have been 2016, 15, something like that. But um, yeah, it was a large, large scale piece that we did for the Bridgeport Arts Arts Fest. There's somebody, is there blowing bubbles, I guess? Is that what the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the, the theme of it was, was infinite possibilities, mm. you know? So in my mind, you know, every time you blow bubbles, it's it's like an infinite amount or it's an infinite potential, you know, for that bubble to be created or to travel. Right. Um, so, I mean, once again, I mean, I, I just I just feel the need to, to have more of a narrative or more of a theme in a lot of the stuff that I do. Um, so, no, you know, we can, there's a lot to look at, so I don't, don't want to miss anything um but this was this done for any yeah. uh, is this on uh, painted on the wall or it's a panel yeah well well they're they're panels i mean at the time that was downtown bridgeport once again well a lot of us were working to revive um and make downtown you know attractive which is sort of stuck because now it's a lot of development stuff happening down there but um at the time yeah this was a boarded up uh building and you know we we used a lot of those um, mm. those buildings to create murals. Uh, that might have been the second Bridgeport Arts Festival, um, and that one says uh, "Save Our Seeds," which is you know commentary. Um, you know, seeds sort of being you know um, a metaphor for kids and just the, you know the kids coming up, particularly in in Bridgeport. Um, you know, and, and you know the idea that something needed to be done to to help help what was going on or it still is going on in Bridgeport and a lot of urban urban cities in the country. Mm. That, that was another one that's also downtown of Bridgeport. Um, that might have been outside of a, that might have just been something that, that mm. I put up before the arts festival and before okay. um, things were, were uh, allowed to happen, I guess. You I was going to say, has, has the fact that graffiti in general, of course, you know, it's been... Um, you know, glamorized and, you know, the the elite of New York City have adopted it and, you know, whatever. Does, has it's taken sort of the fun out of it that it's, that it's been, so, it, that it has been accepted? It, it has, yeah, yes, yes and no. You, you know, I mean, 
as as a graffiti or, or just as an artist in general, graffiti, however, you know, street artist or a, a, a public arts, you know, person, I mean, I, I still love to do it and I still like to make a living off of what I do. So the fact that it's become accepted has allowed me to make a living off of it, you know, mm-hmm. so that's sort of a good thing. And then there's the other side to just, you, you, you know, the authenticity of it that a lot of times is just questioned by people that are thoroughly involved in, in street art and, and street culture. So you sort of, you, you know, you question whether the fact that a lot of stuff has become corporate, you know, does it take any any type of authentic authenticity from it uh, I mean it, a lot of it is, it is up in the air you know it depends on 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 how you see it as as an artist you know I mean if you see it as as the potential to continue doing what you love mm. and make a living off of it and still you know keep keep your code in, intact and cool but you know if you're you know somebody who sees it as hey man you know now that you know everybody's getting paid and it's everywhere <laughs> it's not cool anymore then then you have a problem with it, you know. Right. But, it's, no, right. It's your own perception of, of yeah. you know, what, what it what it means to you and, and your art. Um, now this yeah, is, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a long it's a long discussion that I have with a lot of different artists and different people, but it is what it is, you know. So, yeah. So this is this is, a, this is this powerful. Is, uh, so a piece that. Yeah. yeah. So this is a piece that that's from my my, my new vintage collection, which um I started um you know, just sort of expanding a lot of my themes. So, you know, taking a lot of, you know, just, just the, the, the rawness of graffiti pieces and, and other street art pieces that I was doing and putting it more into like a vintage poster aspect. Um, mm-hmm. for, for a little while, I was, I was working at a, a, a vintage poster restoration place in Stanford. Um, so I used to see a lot of, I mean, but even prior to that, I was always influenced by, you know, just posters and, and, and uh, propaganda and, you know, just advertisements, early advertisements before digital, everything was really analog. So you had to see print mm-hmm. advertisements and big posters and stuff. So I always like that sort of in your face type of, um, you know, art imagery. So yeah. I, I started to, to create, you know, take a lot of my social narratives and see how I could use just the, the, the medium of like vintage posters to once again, you know, just sort of flip things, you know, and take things that you might be used to seeing or, or just even the, the platform you might be used to seeing them on, you know, such as a vintage poster, but then flip a lot of the, the commentary. Um, so I started this whole collection called New, New, uh, New Vintage, which mm-hmm. was a play on a lot of that. Yeah, no, you, you're right. There's a familiarity to some of these icons, and then you go, wait a minute, what what's going on here? You know, this is what happened. Yeah, to the... yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar to you know, I mean, the whole pop art thing, but I still wanted to just do it with a little bit more, you know, a little bit more to it, or just a different angle to it, I guess you could say. Yeah, or a different, a stronger bite, I would say. I'm gonna go back to you for a second here. Maybe you have a well, you got a piece behind you, and that is that a collage or is that painted? The one over your shoulder there. Yeah, this this actually paint is painted. Um, okay. So, uh, you, or want to bring any piece that's easy to yeah. pick up and bring to the camera, just to. Just... Uh, well, this, this this is painted, but this is sort of like a. This is an example of. I don't know if you can hear me behind. Yeah. But, but this is an, an example of that particular. Um, collection yeah uh, so so this i mean once again this is an an evolution of you know sort of the graffiti styles and some of the abstract stuff that i've been doing i've, I've fused it together in this you know particular co- collection mm-hmm. yeah look, i have a piece of yours and, and and it's got that same kind of collaged eyes yeah. that are so uh commanding yeah. i guess is the word i have one of my lovely assistants with me. yeah <laughs> Yeah. You have one. Of, it has glass on it, so it might be reflecting. Yeah, it's a little reflection. But no, I lo- there's something so uh, compelling and unsettling at the same time with this mixed, you know, cultural, racial things, uh, you know, yeah. collaged together. It's it's um, makes quite a statement. is similar to this that collection but this is all like silk screen on on panel 
Oh, okay. Uh, so I'm silk screen. I know a little, I used to do silk screen, but how many colors? I mean, do you screen it yourself with multiple each yeah, yeah. different I mean, color, this, right? This this is a combination of you know uh, spray paint and different layers of of silk screening and spray paint. So I mean, there's just there's oh, okay. multiple layers and a lot of different elements going on. Now you, if you take a slight detour, you're an artist, but you're also a canvas for another artist. You have some ink on your arm. You want to sh share that, or I can cut this out if you don't. <laughs> ink on my arm, like my tattoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, uh, yeah, yeah. This is. Uh, can you bring it a little closer to the? Yeah. That's my 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 company logo. And I, oh, great! With the hand. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is I'm I'm a shamelessly plug my my yeah, clothing company culture. Um, which I've, I've had for a long time. I started doing that, like coming out of out of high school, and you know that that in in a strange way was was part of um, just evolving as as a graffiti artist. Like in the early early eighties, um, in the early eighties, you know, we started you know painting clothes and and doing stuff, doing graffiti on you know jean jackets and pants. You know, as a young kid getting paid twenty five, fifty dollars to do stuff like that, it's like you, you start to think, hey, I could, you know, I could do this a lot <laughs> more. Um, and then that just sort of, you know, snowballed and, and turned into developing a, an, an official clothing brand, um, which you know, I, I apply a lot of the elements of the visual art stuff, but it's a lot of like dyeing and screen printing and and stuff like that. And where can people find it online? Uh, K-U-L-T-J-A-H.com, culture.com. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, so you know, you're quite the entrepreneur as well. So let me go back to sharing because there's so much to see. This, uh, I love this. This is almost like a deco kind of French style to it. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that that's almost like an, an exact play on, um, on an absinthe, you know, poster. That was right. an advertisement for, you know, Green Devil, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, but you know, so I just put a twist on it and made it more about money, about like you know the money, mm. green money devil, <laughs> you know. Um, but mm. I, I thought I thought I always liked those posters because it just seems so sort of dark and mysterious. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, absinthe is the the reputation absinthe had of like you know you oh, yeah. possibly being able to die from it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you still indulged in it, you know. So um, so I, I thought that was a fun. Now this is the one where I referred earlier, you know, crack tonight, which is you know yeah. play on kryptonite and uh, this, you know, uh, the whole yeah. thing. And you got Shaft instead of Superman as Shaft. Um, exactly. Exactly. What's going I mean, on there? Yeah. Well, once again, I mean, even with you know most of my pieces, I do a lot of. I mean, other than just constantly doing doing research, like when I work on specific pieces, I um I focus research on you know what I want to talk about in the piece. Mm. So with this, it just really, you know, goes into the whole 80s era, you know, Oliver North, Reagan, you know, Iran-Contra thing, you know, the, the I, I guess we won't say theory because it was a lot of no. it was proven that, you know, yeah. that the U.S. government was bringing cocaine into the country and allowing it to flourish and, and you know, destroy people's lives, you know, and, and up to that time, I mean, in, in the black community, we've always had, you know, drug issues or in many communities, but specifically the black community, you know, there, there was always drugs and crime and stuff like that. But it, it seemed like once uh, cocaine and crack that time really hit, it was just like a nuclear explosion in the majority of black communities around the country. You know, it was just something about, you know, that mm -hmm. the, the drug, the crack itself, just destroyed families, homes. I mean, just fuel the whole, you know, prison industrial complex. It was just a, a total, you know, Holocaust, really. Um, and yeah, it was good. I sort of, go ahead. Well, you know, you sort of answered a question I was thinking about. You know, the, the what as you know, as a black man with with the injustices going on daily and th this kind of horrible mass injustice what you know what what do you do with your anger but you sort of explained it you create art <laughs> yeah yeah i mean in in a lot of times i mean i think it's more than just anger i think anger is, is a is a, a easy word or emotion to just throw at something like that i mean because i think you know 
black men, the black community is a lot more complex than just yeah. singular emotions, you know, such as anger, you, you know, it's, it's more about, you know, how, how do we, how do we survive within this? You know, how, how do we, you know, teach our kids? How do we, you know, overcome, you know, a lot of what's going on, you, you know, mm-hmm. because it's almost like, okay, anger is, is a knee jerk reaction, but then it's like, okay, well, how do we, how do we deal with this intelligently as opposed to just, you know, initial emotions, you know. You're right. Yeah, no, right. Anger is a, is a, is a reflex, but it's not productive. Um, yeah. But, you know, we all experience it, I mean, to the lowest yeah. level of, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and it's expected. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think every every body, every culture would, would be angry if, uh, especially after, you know, 20 years or however many years, you know, a lot of information comes out that this in, in, in actually was happening you know and our community had to deal with the the results of a lot of this happening and for the most part a lot of people that were involved just got away with it you know or ended up you know oliver north ends up with a tv show and reagan dies peacefully you know it's just like yeah (laughs) the irony is crazy yeah and you know well we're recording this a few days after the impeachment trial and more people are getting away with more things. Yeah, exactly. As we speak. <laughs> exactly. You know, at, at a certain point, it's like, okay, we, we've seen this already, you know, where, where, where do we, how do we channel our emotions? Because we, we know what's going on. You know? So this, this uh, de- definitely uh, resonates with me because my father worked for Walt Disney and, uh, oh. <laughs> and so it's a, the, the, I, the, the the like you said just the flipping an image and flipping it's it's uh, turning it you know questioning mm. its innocence and how, and how adorable it is and 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 turning it around is is really uh, yeah you know this this particular piece I mean once again I'm not you know trying to claim that you know I'm the first one who did anything you know what I mean but but I think now just the use of pop imagery and okay I'll take you know Mickey Mouse and do something with Mickey Mouse or you know mm. whoever you know Richie Rich you, you know it, it's more acceptable and I think a lot of people are just doing it you know at the time I did this you know it wasn't as popular you know so in my mind you know just using you know Mickey Mouse as you know a metaphor for like you know capitalism and you know just America on a whole you, you know and you, you see Mickey Mouse and then you see, you know, mouse traps three for five. It's almost like, you know, capitalism will eat itself. You know, you'll sell yourself <laughs> you'll sell your own death, yeah. you know, and it'll be fun, you know? And then there's sort of like the play on, you know, that I don't know people probably can't see the little arrow, um, but it says terrorists, you know, and it's pointing at Mickey Mouse and it's, you know, yeah, it's just, yeah. No, they can, it's right in the middle there. Uh, you moving okay. my cursor. Yeah. I think they can see yeah. it. Yeah. You know, and that, that was just a play on just, you know, sure you know, uh, America's actions, you know, around the globe, a lot of times, like, you know, it's like we come in peace, but then, you know, we end up, you know, destabilizing countries and destroying people's cultures. And it's like, you know, for your own good, you know, i.e., you know, Libya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, 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 you know. Yeah, no, I like that concept of capitalism eating, devouring itself, which is yeah. really what's going on. Um, uh, we've got about five minutes left, so I may have to flip through some of these quickly. But uh, this is uh, just medium-wise. This is mixed media. Again. Yeah, yeah. This 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 is mixed media. This is uh, you know once again. I mean, and it's sort of a sidebar. Like you'll see a lot of different stuff, and it seems like it's so stylistically different. Um, a lot of that is is me. You know how I work on collections. It's like I, I work on maybe five or six different collections at a time, and sort of helps okay. keep me sane and able to express myself in different ways and not get, you know, locked in. I think some artists get sort of boxed into, you know, a particular style or what they do, and then you're stuck doing that. And, you know, but I, I, I like to work on a lot of different styles simultaneously. Um, so this is, you know, a particular um, style that's mixed media. You know, it goes along with the other graphic collage stuff. So, it's, you know, mixed media, um sort of bold abstract mixed with some some uh portrait type stuff well again i, I like there's a, a lot of your work has strong emphasis on eyes which is you know again very compelling to to, to look at mm-hmm. just a quick before we go to the next one the 32 is that a reference to oj 
Uh, actually, it's Jim Brown. Oh, is it? Jim, okay, I thought OJ yeah. was thirty-two too. But maybe yeah, not. Jim Jim Brown was uh, number thirty-two. Okay. Um, more eyes, which I love. Um, mm -hmm. so let me just uh click through so we can see the rest of these. I don't want to leave anything out. Um, this is really uh, a little darker. I mean, it's almost demonic yeah. kind of look to it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's uh, entitled Culture Vulture. <laughs> yeah. Which, cool. Once again, you know, is along the lines of, you know, what, what was the difference between appreciation and appropriation, mm. you know? And it can be a thin line, and sometimes it can be sort of detrimental to people that are, you know, trying to survive off their own culture. You know? This is... Uh... There's obviously some spray paint in here. Now, this is another whole series, right? Is this part yeah, of the yeah. series? Different? Yeah, that's that's part of like the the graphic collage um, space yeah. particle, you know, fusion, which which is is where I'm 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 sort of hovering at right now because you know I'm I'm feeling just like that freedom of combining you know the abstract with some of the portrait imagery. Um, but yeah, this particular piece is like makes me that that's some paper uh, mix of spray paint um you know some acrylics mm -hmm. Good. yeah there's a couple more in this general series i i, I was watching an interview you yeah. did with uh that's actually oh, i'm sorry go ahead this piece <laughs> no i was saying that th that's actually this this that's a picture of this is the actual piece right oh here oh, oh that's right on yeah, the screen. Yeah. Right. yeah um but yeah, you gave a talk at the Haviland Street Gallery, and um, somebody asked if you had ever done a self-portrait. And that interview was several years ago, or a few years ago. Any any uh, progress there on the self-portrait and <laughs> doing a self-portrait? I know you gave your <laughs> reasons why you had no. <laughs> yeah, I probably forgot what I said. Um, yeah. No, I mean, I think I put a little bit of myself in in every piece. Yeah, that's true. In they're some all, way, <laughs> yeah, they're all self-portraits. But, um, but in sense, yeah. yeah, in in an odd way, but um, like in exam, I'm, I think I'm I'm working on it you know yeah uh, no, I mean, need to uh, get one or two of them no you gave it you, I, I liked your answer it was just that it was all about putting stuff out there not to put your face on everything but this is, yeah you know to but uh um yeah no. these are our, our some more like the abstract some sort of the world that i'm mm -hmm. exploring a lot a lot more um which has a philosophy behind it also you know i mean even as a quote-unquote black artist it's like i feel like a lot of times our art is framed around the black struggle you know which is what i am you know so the fact that i'm i'm a black man in america i automatically come from that so i don't feel like everything necessarily has to reflect that i feel like we should have you know the the opportunity or we should be able to explore you know abstraction we should be able to explore you know, bigger ideas beyond, you know, the things that are oppressing us, you, you know, um, at the same time, and, you know, there's a time and place, like I said, I have collections of stuff that explore that, mm -hmm. but I'm also interested in, in space and, and, you know, time and, you know, so many different other concepts that, you know, black people have been exploring for years, you know, but haven't had the platform to really express themselves. Yeah. Just to, right. To be artists without the hashtag black artists. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and it's not, you know, even that in itself becomes, you know, debate, you know, people like, you know, well, you know, you're a black artist, and you should be able to do that. And and, and I do. It, it's, it's not even a cop out is but it's more like, okay, how can we evolve? Because once again, you know, we start boxing ourselves in, you know, even, you know, on the level of, of institutions, as far as galleries and museums, you know, we have to, I think, broaden ourselves to the point where we create, you know, just a level of art that supersedes what the obvious is, you know. Uh, this particular, this is a, a shot of, of um, an installation I, I did in a, a, a development called Bremen Crown in, in Norwalk, which is an old, uh, it was an old hat factory that they turned into lofts. Um, and I actually, I was asked to do an installation um, and what I did in here was part of another series that I'm, I'm currently working on. Um, it's called like a graphic decay, which 
you know, takes just elements of graffiti that you would usually see mm -hmm. in, you know, heavily uh, utilized spaces, you know, might be an old tunnel or an old place where, you know, a lot of graffiti writers go and just layers and layers and years of graffiti pile up. You know, to me, I, when I went to the places like that, I always liked to see like that type of, you know, motif. Um, so I, I do a lot of that, you know, for installations now. Well, we only got, I'm going to click to the next one. We only got a, a minute or two left here and I want to see you in person. This one's really wild and full of an energy. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the irony of that is, so now it's, you know, it, it's possible to now take what I've been, maybe this is full circle, who knows, or maybe mm -hmm. this is just part of the, the sequence, but um, this is actually in, in, in a, a house in Greenwich. You know, I was, I was asked by a, a collector, you know, mm. a cool couple to come in and just, you know, create, you know, what I wanted to create on, on a, a wall in their house. And I thought that this would be a, like a great contrast, you know, especially the neighborhood it's in and the house that it's in, you go down into their, you know, basement and see this there, you know, it's like a, a head turner. Um, yeah. Okay. That's amazing. I had no idea where it was. Yeah. It's like this urban landscape transported into, uh, into yeah. Greenwich. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's 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 a cool couple. They actually had plans to use that space as like a gallery space, as like a curated space, you know, to have shows mm. um, and things of that nature. You know, I think COVID you threw it off a little bit, but I'm pretty sure there's plans to bring it to bring it back into play. Well, that'd be great. Well, I really appreciate your sharing your time and and the work here. I, I just uh, I know you're in addition to everything else, you're a, you're a husband, you're a father. To, to two uh, wonderful daughters who have been subjects yeah, of my artwork, I appreciate greatly. And um, well, let, let, let me let me show my, my greatest. Piece. Hey, you guys, come here for a minute. Yeah, please take a bow. Take a bow. <laughs> it's the greatest pieces of hi 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 guys. Hi guys. Collaboration pieces, but you know, yeah, <laughs> great, Bye. great family. Well, you are the. Uh, you're the conscience of your community, the artistic conscience of your community and, and our community and, uh, and appreciate your work. And um, we'll talk and I, I thank you guys for, for, for adding me to the mix. Yeah, well, that's what the library needs is a mix. We definitely, <laughs> right. and so that's the, of all kinds, you know, media, art and whatever. So uh, thank you. Thanks, Jermaine. It's so cool to see how your art's been incorporated into those new apartment buildings and the restaurants too. Congratulations on that. To see more of our Artists in Residences series, check out the library's website, westportlibrary.org, and scroll down to the new link that's at the bottom of the page that will take you to our um, YouTube page and the Artists in Residences playlist. Thanks, and hope to see you again at the library soon.